Hey there everybody, James here, and back with another watch review. So today we're talking about something that is a exclusive piece from Omega, no longer offered in the catalog, but that's one of the reasons why I love it. So this is the Seamaster London Boutique Edition, uh, and this was a series of models that they released in 19, or 2019, 2020, uh, across various cities. So there were a couple of them in there, and uh, there were 399 pieces for each uh, Omega Boutique, and I think it was four cities total that received these. So again, this is the London edition. This one in particular is from 2020, and the reference is 511.13.40.20.03.001. So uh, case size is 39.5 millimeters, so a very wearable and manageable stance. Um, the thickness is 12.1 millimeters, so you can see it's a pretty low, you know, pretty reasonable for Omega. Usually they're a little bit thicker, so it's nice that this one is on the thinner side, which I do like. Um, you can see the case, you've got some of the same case design elements that you're used to with Omega, like, you know, you've got these bevels at different angles here on the lugs, so that you'll see on a lot of, you know, models like the Aquaterra. Uh, but you've also got some vintage inspired elements. So you've got like this kind of domed crystal here that is made to emulate kind of when there were plexiglass crystals. Um, the bezel is pretty small. I mean, you can still see there's separation from the case to the bezel, um, but it's pretty small. Like if you look at it straight on, it's almost more of an outline for the dial. So a lot of this piece is not bezel. A lot of this piece is just dial, uh, which makes sense because of what they're doing with that, um, which we'll talk about in a second. So, um, Lug width is 20 millimeters. So as you can see, I do have a uh, different strap on here actually than the factory one. If you've seen other reviews that I've done, you may have guessed that it's a rubber B strap currently. Uh, I do actually really like the factory strap. So this one on the right here is the factory strap that it comes with. So it's kind of this aquamarine color. Uh, but you also know that my wrists are small. So they're about six inches in circumference. Um, and that means that the factory one tends to not fit. It's a little bit loose on me. So I have to get in touch with Omega to get a replacement uh, size for this one. Uh, I do like that it's got the little Omega logo on the buckle. So it's a nice detail. It's a really nice strap, uh, but it just did not fit me right out of the box too well. So that's why I moved over to the rubber B. So lug to lug dimension is 44 millimeter, 44.4 millimeters. So again, very wearable. Um, so let's go ahead and throw it on the wrist so you can see just how it looks. Again, my wrists are about six inches in circumference, just for reference. So you can see, um, wears very well, very, wears easily, and not really at the edge of my wrist. Got a little bit of room to go on that. Very nice looking dial, which we'll talk about in a second. So you can kind of see there, and again, here's the shot where you can see how thin it is, because it is relatively thin, aside from that kind of domed domed crystal that you have there. So let's flip it over, look at the back and talk about what we got back here. So this is kind of uh, a neat aspect of these models. So you can see it says London Boutique Limited Edition. Uh, it's got the caliber 8800, which is a master coaxial movement, um, which vibrates at 25200 uh, vibrations per hour. Uh, you've got a full balance bridge there, uh, and it is Matos certified. So again, um, very accurate. Uh, Omegas have tended to be the most accurate pieces in my collection. Uh, very accurate. You've got a ton of anti-magnetism. So you've got this little uh, icon right here, which signifies the very anti-magnetic hairspring that the watch uses. Um, anti-magnetic to about 15,000 Gauss, so very, very anti-magnetic. Uh, power reserve is 55 hours, water resistance is 60 meters, um, and you know, you've got a nicely decorated back here. So you've got this uh, arabesque Cote de Genève, kind of this circular Cote de Genève, which you'll find on a lot of their movements. Uh, and then kind of the unique part is you have the London skyline here. So you've got some of the key monuments from the city of London right there at the top. And they do also include a loop in the box with this one, uh, which is kind of neat. So you can admire the uh, engraving or the etching um, on the back of the case there. So, so that's what you got on the back. Coming back around to the dial, because this is really where the uh, 
where the uniqueness I think is. Uh, and that's that you've got this few may fade here, you know, so again, there's uh, other companies that do this, you don't see it very often on Omega, which is why I really was drawn to it when I first saw it. Uh, but it's a very deep blue color uh, that starts at the center um, under the cannon pinion. And it kind of where the uh, seconds or minute track is there in the dial, that's kind of where the color ends and then starts to fade out to black around the edges. And even with the lighting here, you can kind of see it's kind of tough to get all the colors on camera. You know, there you can kind of see how deep of a color it is. And if you get it in more light, it looks a little bit lighter. And at some angles it looks, you know, like this, it looks almost completely black. You can't even tell that the fade is there. So that's very cool. Really like that. Uh, the other unique part of the dial is the indices. So you got these really neat looking dart style indices um, and the leaf style hands, uh, as well as the seconds hand, are all 18 karat white gold. So not something that Omega does very often, uh, like on the Aquaterras again, for instance, these are typically rhodium plated, um, but uh, the 18 karat white gold just gives a different level of reflectiveness than I think most other metals do, which is why I really like that. So that's kind of the uniqueness about the dial. Down here, you do have a quick set date. So if I pull the uh, crown out, it's a push down crown, not a screw down crown. So uh, when it's pushed in, this just winds it. Um, when I pull it out to the first position, if I move it clockwise, it doesn't do anything. If I move it counterclockwise, that is my quick set date. And then if I pull it all the way out, then I hack the movement and then I can move my hands here. So, uh, so that's that's the uh, London Boutique Edition Omega Seamaster. So again, very cool. Happy and excited to add another blue dial uh, variant to the collection. Um, you know, and again, I've had a couple of Aquaterras in the past. Um, I did like them, but I feel like they ended up being kind of a duplicate piece in my collection. Uh, and so I think this is a little bit more of the uniqueness and uh, exclusivity that I am starting to look for now um, with these blue dial watches. Um, and of course, you know, the fact that it is a very versatile movement still because it's a, uh, it's a Metas chronometer. So, um, so yes, thanks for stopping by. You know, appreciate you taking the time to take a look. And uh, I, as I always say, you know, I hope that you get out of watches whatever you want to get out of watches because this, this is just a game of, of fun and interest and, uh, you know, learning about all the different uh, brands, movements, all those things. So, you know, thanks for stopping. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I hope to see you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.